The industry's biggest trade show is on the horizon, and while we're sure our invitation got lost in the mail, we're still excited to see what will be announced. Last year featured the console reveals of the PS4 and the Xbox One. With the next generation well underway, this year the focus will be on the games, and for that we at Push to Smart couldn't be happier. So let's take a look at some of the games and trends we hope to see more of at this year's Electronics Entertainment Expo. Okay, so, um, I guess... Maybe we should do just a really brief looking at last year. What did you like? What didn't you like? PlayStation and Sony were really sassy. (laughs) They were so sassy and I lived for it. It was one of those things where people were kind of unsure how much of their presentation was kind of reactionary Mm -hmm. to Xbox One's because Xbox One took place like the day or a couple days Mm -hmm. before. And so people were kind of theorizing that they were like changing slides like immediately after just to be like, ha ha ha, we can one up you. (laughs) Yeah, it was funny though, because what they announced that got the biggest applause was something we already have, which is you can borrow your friend's games. You can buy you. Yeah. (laughs) And that literally got thunderous applause from a giant room full of journalists but a lot of it did have to do with the attitude with which they presented it like while they're doing that and they're getting all that applause they released that that video that went viral immediately of them kind of parodying the overwrought and really complicated steps that you would have to take to lend someone a game on the xbox but it's funny because this year they, they are broadcasting into movie theaters so Clearly, they think they've got something good, but at the same time, it's like, how do they even top that mic drop last year? Yeah, true. That, that's the thing. I, I feel like since it is going to be, we're going to be seeing a lot of trailers, and that's why mm-hmm. the theater, they're just going to Ooh. have everything be very cinematic and look really cool, which I'm really excited for. Are you going to go? Uh, I haven't decided yet. Yeah. It, like, it sounds really cool, but at this, and I love popcorn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to, like, tweet with, mm-hmm. like, popcorn thumbs on right. my phone while in the theater. It just, it just seems kind of, I don't know. I don't know. E3 is well, such a social experience, even yeah. though most of us don't get to go because we're all watching it live at home. We're all tweeting. We're all um, seeing what everyone else has to say. And I'm not sure if showing it in a movie theater will remove that, if the regular rules will apply, or if it's just a case of popcorn thumbs. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's why I haven't been going. But it still, it says a lot for their confidence that they think, oh, yeah, we have reason to rent out all these screens. And it's a free yeah. oh, showing, is it? too. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. You just have to sign up, so it's, like, first come, first serve. But anyways, moving on to 2014. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Coming into the event, what are you, what is the one thing that you are most excited for? That's the thing, because there's lots of games that I know are going to be at E3, but I don't feel like I need to see any more of them. I'm already sold on them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like Dragon Age Inquisition, and like the, it's kind of a tradition at this point to see the new Assassin's Creed and figure out, you know, what giant overly expensive bundle I'm going to have to pre order. Yeah. (laughs) But for the most part, like, games like Dragon Age Inquisition, Assassin's Creed Unity, The Evil Within, Alien Isolation, I'm already locked in. I don't need to see any more. For most of those things, I'm, I'm just waiting for a release date. Yeah, exactly. And it's, like, strangely, I find that the games that I'm most excited for are going to be there in a playable capacity, but they aren't going to be part of the big theatrical shows, which is all the Nintendo games, because Nintendo's not going to have a traditional press conference again this year. But they will be showing Hyrule Warriors on the floor, which I'm really excited to hear a little bit more about. You're much more excited about that game than I am. (laughs) (laughs) I'm more excited than I know I should be. Um, Mm -hmm. And Super Smash Brothers, of course, they're doing that demo. They're demoing it in Best Buys again. But one of the things is it came out, they're looking at using the NFC tech at E3, and they didn't go into what detail as far as what that means, but of course Disney Infinity has had so much success, and the Skylanders have had so much success. I wonder if they're going to roll out a new figurine collection for Smash Brothers, which will be the mm-hmm. end of me, but I'm really excited to see it. <laughs> have to get a new job oh, just to pay for all these figures. Another one. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, for me, I'm actually looking most towards Ubisoft because I I just need information on Beyond Good and Evil 2. <laughs> it's just been teased out over the past, mm-hmm. like, five, six years. Just 
the, the tiniest tidbits, and it's been holding me over till the next year when we get barely anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm hoping this time we actually get something concrete, even if it's just to say, you know what, guys, we can't do this anymore, which is yeah. fine because Beyond Good and Evil, the first game, it's fine. I can have it the way it is. Just stop stringing us along. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, <laughs> I also need Sony to cancel The Last Guardian. Like, <laughs> enough is enough. It's become a joke. Like, we understand that you've put a lot of work and money into this, but I would rather you cancel it and surprise us than keep saying, oh yeah, we're working on it. Yeah. Um, it's not totally dead. It's yeah. still kind of alive. Just give us closure. Yeah, that's all I'm asking for. Just mm-hmm. some closure. I just need to move on. And one thing about the Beyond Good and Evil is they did tease it. I think it was during a live stream of one of the Rayman games that just came out. Um, mm. They showed some new concept art for Beyond Good and Evil. So Beyond Good and Evil 2 has been one on my top things to see list for like every E3 since they first (laughs) announced it in 2003. Exactly. Um, But this is the first time it's like, okay, we might actually really get something. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And then there was that uh, little bit of gameplay footage. I can't remember when that happened, but it was just so random and brief. And they didn't, I don't think they ever confirmed or denied that it was actually Beyond Good and Evil. Mm -hmm. That was just what everyone assumed because it looked like Jade. Which, because Ubisoft is such a sprawling company, And previously, we've had things when they were starting up their filmmaking branch, we had a clip leak that was just people were um, guessing about it being, you know, from a new Assassin's Creed project, but it was just using audio from Jacob's Ladder, I think it was. Mm -hmm. So it was just a test that was never meant to be seen by the public. And it's quite possible that that footage we saw was also another test to just use the Jade iconography because it was easy to use in there. Mm-hmm. Everything so far has been with a grain of salt, but man, when they showed that concept art, it was like, okay, we're, we're getting it this year. It's, it's about to get real. Similarly, games that we know are coming, Mirror's Edge 2, which I loved the original Mirror's Edge, and it was a very imperfect game. There was a lot in the gameplay that was frustrating. It just wasn't tight enough for the game that it set out to be, but it was one of those games where I was like, okay, in the second game, this is going to be so much better, and I cannot wait. And it's been... Uh, a long time. <laughs> and then they kind of announced it last year. Mm-hmm. And so hopefully we're going to see more of that. It was kind of um, mentioned that they were rebooting it in a mm-hmm. weird way or something. I don't know. I'm very confused. I just want a bit more clarification, preferably a release date. Because <laughs> things get getting keep getting pushed back to 2015. I'd like some more on my plate this year. Yeah, I still haven't played the first one. I, I The commercials made me motion sick, and I was just like, maybe mm-hmm. that's not that's not a good sign for me. But it was such, from the outside, it had such a distinctive art style mm-hmm. and aesthetic, and it would be really cool to have more stuff like that than just, you know, another game about space marines. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, when it came out, it was so different because it mm-hmm. was vibrant and bright, and it was a first-person game that was more about exploration and just being cool and sliding and jumping. Right. I loved it. And it was from EA, which is the big mm-hmm. thing. Like, there's tons of games out there, like millions, but this mm-hmm. was something that a big company put money behind that wasn't about space marines. Like, exactly. that's huge. Mm-hmm. And it's really nice to see them maybe giving it a second chance, even if I might not be able to physically play it and then another thing that i'm kind of curious about because we kind of talked about xbox's presentation last year was really lackluster and part of it was they were really trying to sell us on that kind of convergence theory and the idea that they have finally created the black box that will do everything (laughs) and they just announced that they are dropping the connect from bundles to also drop the price so almost everything now yeah so that basically kills (laughs) their multimedia pitch from last year so I'm wondering what how that will affect their presentation this year. And games like D4, which was the only Xbox game I actually wanted to play, which I think depends on the Kinect. Like, what does that mean? That is a good question. Because I'm <laughs> sh- <laughs> Well, it, it, it's kind of one of those things. It kind of reminds me of when PlayStation was like, oh, yeah, we have a motion controller, too. Yeah. This is the move. Yeah. And so a lot of things kind of got shoehorned in. For example, mm-hmm. like Heavy Rain was going to have a bunch of DLC, but because they had to like remake the game with move controls mm-hmm. just to support this new product, we didn't get any of that. So I feel like it's going to be a similar situation in that some things are going to get left by the wayside to kind of shoehorn a more Mm -hmm. traditional console experience into their games. 
Yeah, I just, which I think is fine because my theory on all that is like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. I've tried to play, this is not Xbox One, but the Skyward Sword for the um, Wii recently, The Last Legend of Zelda game. And it was just because it it was trying so hard to sell you on the hardware. And it's like, you have to use the Wii remote to slash the sword. And I ended up, because the way I hold the remote, just running around with Link with his sword above his head. And it was just the silliest (laughs) thing. And it was like, I have, you know, 20 years with a muscle memory. Why Mm -hmm. are you trying to break that? (laughs) That is a very good point. Yeah. So it's like, this might be good in the sense that it's focusing this technology to actually do something new instead of trying to shoehorn it into places where we already have well-worn, proven methods. But then I really hope something like D4 doesn't get shelled, because if anyone can make it work, it's sweary. <laughs> mm-hmm. Speaking of Zelda, last year, like... One of, if not my favorite games, was A Link Between Worlds. Yes, that was amazing. And so I'm really hoping they have another 3DS game in the works, or even a Wii U game that's just mm-hmm. as creative. Because it didn't reinvent the wheel, but it just, it was such a perfect game. It was the opposite of Skyward Sword. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it gave just enough to make it fresh and exciting, a new mm-hmm. coat of paint and everything, and it was just such a great experience. And then along the similar lines, I... I think it's time we really need to see the return of Samus, especially after yes. Other M. Oh, Jesus. It, yes. Because she needs... <laughs> Let's not speak of that. <laughs> she needs a new game. She needs a new good game. She just needs to be put out there because people love her. She's an icon. And the fact that we haven't seen her in so long is... It's, mm-hmm. it's frustrating. Smash Brothers does not count. And, like, no. the weird way that they're sort of sexualizing her is just bizarre to me. Was Zero Suit Samus in her rocket boot high heels? Which I feel like, on one hand, rocket boot high heels sound like the best thing ever. But the way in which they're implementing it with, like, her new figure and, like, the super Mm -hmm. tight latex suit looking thing. It's like, come on, guys. Yeah. (laughs) And the weird positions they're putting her in, and the fact that her last game was another M. I want another Prime. I need another badass bounty hunting game where she's just doing Mm -hmm. her job, being the awesome character she has always been. Sexual vulnerability is not personality. There are always games that they announce at E3 that come totally out of left field that ended up being more excited about than anything. So I think that's kind Mm -hmm. of important note for, like, last year it was Octodad, and the year before that it was Assassin's Creed Liberation. So it's like, while I'm excited for these games and for other games, I'm already kind of sold and don't really need anything besides confirmation. I'm also really excited for that left field surprise and where it will be coming from. Yeah. One of the really random out of left field mm-hmm. surprises last year was that Square Enix was taking Final Fantasy 13 Versus, which was kind yeah. of like the last guardian <laughs> of Square Enix, where they were like, no, we're still kind of working yeah. on it, maybe? I don't know. And then they're like, actually, we're just going to make this the next game. Yeah. Why the hell not? And it's Uncharted 4, basically. And it's, it's one of those things where it, it looks interesting in a way. It, it's much more action-oriented than any game in the franchise thus far. But I'm really disappointed looking at the cast list. It is the most bland, nothing but dudes except for the one girl. I don't think there's a playable female that we've been seen yet. Um, there aren't any... There's no diversity. There's no mm-hmm. people of color or anything, which, you know, we've had in previous games. There's always been... At but then they'd, they'd had an afro with a bird living in it or something. So it's not... Exactly. It's, like, <laughs> it's not the greatest. I was kind of like the... Un, the Final, I almost said Uncharted 4. The Final Fantasy 15 trailer looked really good. But at the back of my mind, all I kept thinking of, yeah, but Dirge of Cerberus. Which was the last time they tried yeah. to take the Final Fantasy franchise out of the RPG stable and kind of make it more action-oriented. And it was a terrible game. I cannot recommend it to it everybody. Was so... Anybody bad. <laughs> it was funny, because when it first came out in Japan, one of my friends played it, and she was, and I was talking about being really excited for it. She goes, your time would be better spent eating paint. And <laughs> and I bought the game anyway, I played it, and it was like, yep, that was probably a good assumption. <laughs> it was one of those things, too, is like, I was playing it, and I was like, why am I continuing I to play this? This isn't good. It is merely Final Fantasy, and that is why yeah, I am continuing. Well, I bought it, because I'm a um, semi-completionist and like i had bought the gawked single box set which had there was like the limited edition gawk single that was the size of the game and like the soundtrack that was the size of the game so then there was like a game-sized hole that i I needed to fill (laughs) 
This is what happens when you do this stuff to J-pop fans. You force them to make and play bad video games. And that was the last good Gox single. So it was like everyone just, no one came out of that okay. But it's like Final yeah. Fantasy 15 and Kingdom Hearts 3. I feel like we might see a little bit, but Square Enix has such a much bigger presence in Japan. They have their own, like they have the Square Enix parties or whatever, like the big trade shows basically that are just their games that their fans can come to. They have Tokyo Game Show. So I'm wondering, I, I feel like for those games, we're not going to see as many big things from them. I feel like they're going to save those for their home turf. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see any new games from mm-hmm. them. I just think we're going to see a bit more of Kingdom Hearts 3, a bit mm-hmm. more from Final Fantasy 15, um, maybe like an expansion for 14, because that one's been doing really mm-hmm. well, and then probably a release date for Kingdom Hearts HD Remix yeah. 2.5. There have been some kind of interesting announcements leading up to E3, like we got our first look at Battle Cry. Is another kind of, um, it looks like another giant multiplayer game in the sense that, like, Titanfall was basically all multiplayer, even as so they claim I haven't played it yet with like a single player aesthetic. And it's free to play, which that makes me kind of nervous. Um, but I really like the idea of just this massive multiplayer hack and slash brawler. The concept is really cool. Like it looks cool. And so long as the gameplay is fun, I'll totally be down. Yeah, it has a very distinctive voice from its premiere trailer. Yeah. But then again, Another one of my favorites from a previous E3 that had a distinctive voice was um, Overstrike, that uh, Insomniac game that got reduced to Fuse when it finally came out. Like, it lost all of its personality. It was this game, I think it was from Insomniac, it had this really just fun trailer where it introduced you to four different characters, and they all worked together in a t- as a team, and it was going to be one of those four-person co-op games, and then it came out we didn't hear anything about it for months, and then it was released as this game called Fuse, where all the color and personality was sucked out of it, and it was just like, oh. So I really hope that does not happen to Battle Cry. <laughs> is the moral of that story. Kind of a similar thing. The Order 1886, when I saw that trailer, I was like, this is cool. But I definitely had my reservations, because there was just the one girl, and I was like, oh, okay, she's going to be the token woman. Mm-hmm. There aren't going to be any people of color because you can put fucking monsters yeah. and vampires and demons in ye old time Britain, but you can't put any people of color in there because they just yeah. didn't exist, you know? <laughs> they weren't invented by Industrial them. Industrial revolution, God. man. It's just that trope that is, it, it would be hilarious if it wasn't so fucking sad. Yeah. So basically what I've read since that reveal trailer has not been allaying my fears. Yeah. So not as excited. <laughs> I can't get into that g- like, even the first trailer, like, it looked really cool, the setting, and then they revealed immediately, like, oh, yeah, it's a cover-based shooter. It's like, really? You're going to use yeah. that awesome setting on a cover-based mm-hmm. shooter? Like, <laughs> Yeah. And I was actually just reading a recent article, and it was talking about, like, oh, yeah, I got to play this gameplay mm-hmm. of the game, and there are all these different paths that you can take to get to your goal. And I died on every single one of them <laughs> except for the cover-based shooting. And I was like, well, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was my experience with The Last of Us. It was like, you could use stealth, and I died every time I tried to use stealth. Oh. So maybe it's just <laughs> a skill thing, because <laughs> I know I was not good <laughs> at that. Um, as far as like trends go, this kind of you know goes with The Order 1886. I would definitely love to see more diversity, mm-hmm. of course, more women, more people of color, more, more the gays. <laughs> <laughs> Which, this year at GDC, they honored Feminist Frequency for her Mm -hmm. contributions. So that kind of gives me a little bit of hope that she's receiving such visible industry credit for the great work that she does. And we also had, you know, The Last of Us that had very visible gay characters. Mm -hmm. And it was received very well. We've Mm -hmm. had the second, I believe it was the second very successful GamerCon, things like that. So feel like like the visibility is there Mm -hmm. and i'm i always go into e3 optimistic and then leave (laughs) like oh i hate people last year i wasn't as much hate Mm people-y so maybe this year will be the turning point (laughs) yeah here's to hoping yes don't let us down even though we'll inevitably be somewhat let down Mm -hmm. don't let us down too much do you have any like dream projects you hope they'll surprise you with Oh, God. I will... So, this is one of those things that I almost don't want to say it because I worry (laughs) that if I say it, I'll jinx it. But one of my dream projects, and Telltale Games, listen up, if Telltale Games did a The Thing game, that would be (gasps) brilliant. I want that. That would be perfect. It fits everything that they're about perfectly. And I think that they would do brilliant work. Oh, my God. Why does that not exist? Exactly. See, that's why... 
maybe if I have people say it enough, mm-hmm. I don't care. You can take my idea. You don't have to pay for it. Just freaking do it. Get those rights. It's probably not expensive. I mean, <laughs> just do it. Oh my god, that would be amazing. What about you? Dream project? Mine, nothing as good as that, I'm sure. Nothing as good as that. Kidding. I would just love Square Enix to come out and be like, we're sorry for the third birthday. Um, we've given, we're rebooting the franchise. Yeah, we're be rebooting the Parasite franchise. We're giving it to another studio that we've acquired over the years, because that's just what Square Enix does. Written by Rihanna Pratchett. Yeah, we're just going to let other people play in our sandbox for once mm-hmm. yeah. and see how it goes. Like, I would love for more studios to do what Konami has done with Silent Hill, even though it has not always worked out in his favor. Mm-hmm. But Silent Hill Shattered Memories, to me, was a, like the perfect way to do a reimagining. Mm-hmm. And by giving it to another studio, saying, you know, this is the world, this is these are the themes, have fun. But they come up with something that really sticks to the spirit of the original, but is also totally unique and doesn't trample the original. And I would just love, especially with Square Enix, have, who has, like, every time they don't make their ridiculously high goals for a project, just kind of shrug and buy another studio. <laughs> That use those. Let them play in your sandbox, whether it's Parasite mm-hmm. Eve, whether it's a Final Fantasy side project. I don't uh, care. Um, I would also settle for Nintendo giving us a Professor Layton versus Ace Attorney release date for the US. That would be nice. I, I'm not asking for much, I don't think. No. <laughs> Hasn't it been released in Europe for a while? Yeah. yeah. It came out earlier this it's year. It's already been localized with our European brethren. Like, Get come on. Even if it's just a freaking downloadable title yeah. like that worked for Ace Attorney it did so that's how we're gonna end this just pleading please yeah. please <laughs> please <laughs> so that does it for our discussion on all things E3 it's going to be a very exciting show this year and definitely tell us in the comment section what you are looking forward to most and subscribe to the show and keep me up to date on our latest episodes including our E3 2014 recap coming in just a couple of weeks yeah. And tweet at Telltale that you want a thing game. Yes, please make it a thing. <laughs> Do hashtag make it go viral. It needs to be done. <laughs> Telltale games, please, from the love of God. The thing. All you have to do is just thank me in the credits a little bit. Or not. I don't even care. Just give me the game. I want it. Thank you. We still have much work to do. My brother. <laughs>